Hello everyone, Kenneth Loy here, getting back to Resident Evil 1 Remake. And the last time, a lot of the zombies decided to wake up. So, like, in the uh, walkway here, there there was a zombie that um, came up and then several different places. So, like, all the zombies that I found that weren't alive at the time have now arisen again. And we've opened this door, so that's where I'm going to go um, exploring, because I'm sure that this door right here probably requires the key that we recently got. And I am going to go back to this room to turn off the pump, because I kind of have a bad feeling that if I leave it on, it'll do something that I don't want it to. <laughs> Because since I'm not 100% sure what the pump even does, um, I'm pretty sure I would not be at all surprised if I leave it on and then it'll make the monster even harder or something along those lines. Is this the right door? Yes it is. Wait, did it, like, automatically shut off? The lid on this pump is open. Do you want to pump? No. But the monster is still there. Okay. Like, I can't do anything else in this room from the look of it for now. So I'm not going to worry about it. And also, on a side note, the zombies are a lot more aggressive than they were before, so the handgun may not even really cut it. And I don't really have a lot of ammo for the shotgun for sure, so that's a problem. Does she have anything to say about these paintings? No? Okay, I don't think... I might be able to open this door, I'm not sure. I keep getting mixed around to where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> yes, I know there's a zombie upstairs. Leave me alone. Because of these camera angles and everything, it makes it so much more difficult to navigate. So I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a zombie right next to this door here, because I didn't burn him. Or maybe... Use the mansion key. Well, let's quickly get in before he wakes up. I could definitely tell that he had claws in there that I did not distinctly remember. Okay, something really bad happened here. Gives off a pleasant aroma like fine wine. Okay, but I want the ink ribbon. Jill, will you pick up the ink ribbon, please? <laughs> it's right there. Eh. Seriously? <sighs> I have to go around, don't I? That's pretty dumb. Or, or I have to go at an angle like this. There we go. Thank you. Okay, there is more stuff in this room.
Is there like stuff in these cabinets or something? Okay, there we go. Will you take the musical score? Well, I guess. <laughs> This, this camera at a angles are... <laughs> uh, let's examine it. Titled Moonlit Sonata. Okay, nothing special about it. An expensive looking grand piano. Well, will you use it? No, uh, ev evidently not. Seriously? And there's still something else in this room, apparently. I don't really see anything else to do in here. saw that. Um, she can't look at what's on the ground, apparently. So am I seriously not supposed to just use this on the piano? I'm... That doesn't make sense to me. Because I can't think of anything else to do in this room. Okay, well, I guess we have to go back to the item box. To drop it off, since she refuses to do anything with it. Just leave that guy on the floor for right now. Though I would definitely, if, if there was more kerosene nearby, I would have definitely uh, burned him. Now that I know that he is probably going to be an issue. Uh, I keep getting turned around. There we go. But I am glad that I got rid of the ones right next to the item boxes, because that would be really annoying to deal with. Some more ink ribbons, that is very good. And then I'll put you here. Okay. What kind of fascinates me is that at the very beginning of the game, they're very stingy with the ink ribbons. And now that I'm at this point, I have so many, I, <laughs> I don't know what to do, how to, what to do with them. Okay, so what I'm probably going to do is examine this door here, I think. And then potentially some second floor exploring. First, let's uh let's go in here.
if I do make it to the other um, item box, I am going to burn that zombie, I think. Nothing to do with the clock at the moment. This door right here. It's locked. An emblem of the helmet. Okay. And that means I could go around and then go here and then go this way. Something in the item box room? Really? I thought it said that I got rid of that. I'm still on the right track, I think. And I need to go in here. You use the mansion key, very good. Since it's a really long hallway, I'm guessing there are at least one zombie in here. Yes, definitely. I knew there had to be at least one in here. Or crows. Okay. A picture of a sage wearing a necklace. It's set in red stained glass. There's a switch here, press it. No. Picture of a saint wearing a crown. S set in yellow stained glass. There's a switch here. Would you, will you press it? No. I don't know. I don't know about you, but those crows don't really sound like crows to me. I could be mistaken. Lisa protected by the three spirits. A picture of a woman wearing a bracelet, necklace, and a crown. Just switch it at the bottom of the picture. Press it? No. I vaguely remember this room from uh, Royal Mithra's Let's Play, and what happens is that if you get if you press the wrong switch, the crows attack you. So that's not what I want to do. Okay, the title is follows. Bring the light of the truth to the three spirits. Okay, that's pretty vague. Okay, a, val a valiant wearing a bracelet. It's set in yellow stained glass. Press it. No. So if they're talking about truth, wouldn't the sage, I feel like the sage or the um, crown would be the person. But I'm not going to do anything with this for right now. I kind of feel like I don't have enough information to do this puzzle. But I have it open, so that's nice. I know that there's something to do here.
And then I don't think I can do anything with this door, can I? No. Spencer Family Emblem. Still not exactly sure what that implies. If there's like a Spencer key or something. There's something written here. I left you some bullets in the room on the right. Feel free to use them up if you manage to get yourself in trouble. Barry. Thank you very much, Barry. I I appreciate that. See, Barry's looking out for us. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. So we get 50, uh, 15 extra bullets. Another handgun magazine, so we have 30 bullets now. Will you take the incinerary shells? Yes, indeed, I will. And then first aid spray. Uh, first aid spray, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but what that does is that it is a effectively a full heal. So I can put that in there. Um... But at the same time, using the red herb and the green herb is effectively a full heal as well. Um, so I'm not sure which would be better to hang on to and use. And I'm kind of leaning towards actually putting this back, ah, the mixed herbs, because uh, once we get into, once we get to the point where, um, we have blue herbs to remove poison that will be very good because you can mix all three together and then that'll be a full heal plus um, plus removing poison so I'm gonna put this here and then leave the first aid spray here kinda wish that you could There we go. So Barry gave us 30 handgun bullets, 6 incinerary shells. We don't have the grenade launcher yet. So that isn't useful yet, but it will be. Um, and then some healing items. So that is very nice of Barry for us. Um... There are actually three different types of shells for the grenade launcher. There's incinerary, which burns stuff, so anything weak to fire damage effectively will take increased damage from that, which I think means zombies. Um, then there's acid shells, which are very good against anything with armor. Yeah, like some bosses, I think, are weak to the acid shells, and then there are um, explosive shells, which are like general purpose things. So that is very good. Oh, and then refilling the uh, fuel canteen. I think there's only one use of it left. There's only a little bit of kerosene left. Will you fill your canteen? Yes. Which I'm guessing means that there's only one use of it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Not a single drop of kerosene remains, uh, if you say so, Jill. And if I'm really desperate and want more, there is that... There is kerosene over here. Which may... Well, I guess I didn't bring the fuel canteen with me, but... That would have been helpful as well. So, I'm going to explore these rooms up on the second floor. And I don't remember there being any zombies in there, but this game just decides to uh, throw in zombies wherever it likes, so it's probably it's 
probably not gonna matter a whole lot. Okay, there is uh, this door here. Use the mansion key, very good. Yeah, getting that armor, um, that armored key has really opened things up. So we have, will you take the green herb? Yes, I will. Uh, will you take the red herb, please? Yes. Thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and combine these already. Since I know the red herb is useless on its own, for the most part. So that opens up a locked door and then an open door. Use the lockpick. Okay, very good. Um, since I need the lockpick, that's kind of making me feel like there's going to be danger around this corner. Not that I can avoid it, really, but... Oh, there's Barry! Ah. Jill! Barry, I didn't mean to get you that excited. Right. Anyway, you should read this. Researchers will. Well, first, before I start reading this, uh... <laughs> like I mentioned last part, um... Up until the point where I was at, up until this point, we have never really had any interactions with Barry or Wesker since the very beginning of the game, and then all of a sudden, Barry's just here, and he's behind a locked door, like, that you have to use the lockpick on. I kind of feel like Barry is a bit suspicious if he's behind a locked door. That just doesn't make sense to me. And then they act as if they have seen each other many times before this. I mean, I'm sure if you have, like, the most ideal route of getting the best ending, um, this makes a lot more sense. But at where I am coming from, <laughs> this just seems a bit odd. Okay. A letter is slipped inside. The top part of the letter is torn off. The rest of the letter is legible. Elma, I have tried to survive, only to see you again, but my efforts only delayed the inevitable. I am infected, and there is no cure from what will follow. Except my end my life before I lose the only thing that separates me from them. So this researcher didn't want to become a zombie. My love for you. In an hour, I'll have entered my eternal sleep where there is peace. Please understand. Please know that I am sorry. Martin Crackhorn. What do you make of it? Well, I guess we were right about this mansion being quite unnatural. You have a way with understatements. Where's the part that's torn off? Well, my only guess is that it was the most important part, and somebody didn't want anyone to see it. Let's continue our investigation. <laughs> really? Really? Just... Oh, I haven't seen you throughout, like, my entire exploration of the mansion. I'm just gonna leave you here. Like, you know, go explore some more. <laughs> what? What is this story? Okay, there's something else in here. The water tank smells like something once lived in there. Perhaps someone was using it to raise some sort of creature. Well, I guess that's a valid assumption. Okay, what's here? Will you take the... The fish... <laughs> Various types of fish hooks. So you're telling me that Jill just, for some reason, thinks that one fish hook out of this entire thing is useful. Oh, okay. I guess everything, anything, and everything is useful here. Um, what else is in here that I could use? There's a white leg, light a white lab coat 
hung up there. It smells vaguely like a medicine cabinet. Well, I mean, I guess. You can't carry any more items, of course. Sorted fishing lures, and for some reason that bug is useful? Seriously? But, but seriously, that that encounter with Barry just seemed really, really odd to me. Like, from from the context of, of what I have seen of my story so far, it it's just kind of like, oh, I haven't seen you for a while. Hey, look at this. Oh, you looked at it. What do you think of it? Oh, I, uh, I'll I'll just do my own thing. You know. It's like, okay, Barry, well, whatever you say. Okay, so this hook is apparently useful. This musical score. It is kind of irritating that I can realistically only carry two items, but at the same time, considering the zombies are more aggressive, I could probably get rid of the survival knife. To be completely honest, um, because it's not like they're gonna let me just wail on them with the knife. I mean, it's pretty much only there at the beginning of the game to save ammo. And since Barry gave me some, I have plenty of handgun bullets, so, hmm, that's worth considering. <laughs> 